Electoral Commission has been urged to increase its vigilance in the December 7 elections to avoid cases of impersonation and filming of cast ballots. This follows the impersonation of an immigration officer by a voter in the Blakema Central constituency. Another electoral, office, another electoral offense was recorded with a security officer caught taking photos of his ballot in a booth. Christian Yali has a wrap. The incident at Ablikuma Central was not an isolated case during the special voting. TV3 has intercepted social media posts in which people breached the secrecy of their ballot, raising questions about the integrity of the electoral process. At Ablikuma Central, an officer was forced to delete images he took after voting, but he was not arrested. When they checked, they realized that somebody has used my name to cast his vote, which is uh, very bad. So I raised the alarm that, no, that's not me. In another incident, a voter impersonated an immigration officer. I used my thumbprint for the machine to verify it, but it rejected my uh, fingerprints. And they used the, the facial uh, camera to, catch, uh, to, to take the picture of my face, but I don't want to decline my uh, my face so they have to do the manual verification for me which is very bad both parliamentary candidates for the new patriotic party and the national democratic congress are hopeful the 2020 electoral violence won't be repeated this year there is some cooperation between all the political parties ensuring that we have a very smooth and successful you know special you know voters exercise you help in making sure that the kiosk that we experience the 2020 should not happen. And as an MP, I am assuring you that we will put mechanisms in place. It was a peaceful process at Ablikma West as well, but the NDC parliamentary candidate has a concern. He wants the Electoral Commission to be a little more customer-centric, such that those who come here and may not know their way around would be guided as to how to vote. This should be a little bit up to more customer service oriented in the sense that you know i'm coming to vote i don't know what's going on at least there should be people who will be able to direct people to what to do i've seen people move from the presidential to the parliamentary when and even one or two people at the point had to put their ballot in the presidential box the special voting may have ended, but the electoral process continues with the main elections expected on Saturday. Christian Yale, TV3 News, Ablikma West. The Speaker of Parliament has served notice that Parliament will reconvene on Monday, December 16, after the general elections to enable the House wrap-up on its seventh meeting of the fourth session. The Speaker in the notice persuades to order 58 of the standing orders of Parliament of Ghana noted that the meeting will take place at 10 a.m., but the location will be appointed by the Speaker in due course. Now, so let's uh, take you down memory lane and why the Speaker has found it necessary to recall Parliament. You recall that some four seats were uh, declared vacant and that's what caused the Speaker to first of all adjourn Parliament, Senate Day and now after several issues back and forth and a court decision, the House is being reconvened again. So it actually started on the 14th of October 2024 where Majority Leader Alexander Fenyomarkin filed a suit at the Supreme Court. The day after that, the minority leader, Kesel Atoforsen, requested the Speaker to declare the four seats vacant. And what happened was that uh, the Speaker, following the request, then declared the four seats vacant, and then the Supreme Court later wrote to the Speaker asking him to halt the implementation of his decision of declaring the four seats vacant. Now, the Speaker following the debate of whether or not his decision to, uh, to uh, declare the four seats vacant were right, asked the House to be adjourned indefinitely, and that was on the 22nd of October. About six days after that, the Speaker um, asked the Supreme Court to also reverse the order they had sent to him as Speaker, uh, saying that they were outstepping their bounds. Now, on the 30th of October, the uh, Supreme Court dismissed the Speaker's application or the right back to them, and they asked that that one be set aside as the earlier ruling 
encouraging him to go according to the earlier order he's been given to withhold the implementation of the suspension. On the 7th of November, the Speaker again adjourned Parliament indefinitely as the MPs on the then majority side, the NPP MPs, failed to attend Parliament, although they asked for the recall. Now, on the 12th of November, the Supreme Court, in a 5-2 majority decision, ruled as unconstitutional the Speaker's declaration of the four seats vacant, meaning that the current Parliament, as is, should return to normal, 137, 137 with uh, um, one independent candidate. On the 22nd of November, the Majority Leader, Alexander Fenyomarkin, again requested the Speaker to recall Parliament. I was on the back of that that the Speaker said, you have recalled twice, but you do not show up, and that they were going to review their decision. The minority leader, NDC's um, leader in parliament, Case Latuforsen, asked the speaker to decline the MPP's request for parliament to be recalled. On the 27th, the speaker rejected the request of the NPP to recall the House, and the latest we know, which came in today, is that on the 16th of December, the House will be recalled, meaning after elections on December 7, the House would be recalled to go and finish government business.